All right, so there's still lots of uh, cucumbers on my plants. I'll pick all them styles there. I'll leave the little guys. But uh, I'll pick out almost everything that's fairly matured or close to it. And I think, uh, I think it's time to make more pickles. But this time, let's make uh, dill pickles. Nice, crunchy dill pickles. Okay, so I'm going to start harvesting. And uh, let's see what we get. See you in a bit. Okay, so that's 56 pounds. There's seven groups and each group eight pounds. So the recipe we're using basically will give us, okay, these jars here are 500 milliliters. So we'll end up with uh, 56 jars, roughly one pound per jar. So we're going to cut the blossom ends and then we're going to measure my jar, the height of my jar, and then we're going to start cutting them into spears and we're going to give them a salt water bath in the fridge, keep it nice and cool and that's just to draw out all the moisture, excess of moisture. And then uh, we're going to keep rotating all these bunches in the fridge and for the next few days we're going to be making uh, dill pickles because they got to basically stay in the fridge for at least 12 hours or more. So that's what I'll be doing in the next little while. Be right back. All right, so let's carry on now. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cucumbers. You have the... Uh, The end where the stem is, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just going to trim them off a little bit. But the, the other end, where the flower blooms, you have to remove about a quarter inch off that. Now apparently, there's an enzyme in the tip where the flower was that will make your pickles go mushy. That's just what I read. Don't know anything else about it. All I know is I'm making some dill pickles. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the end off here and I'm going to measure my, my uh, jars. And then I'm going to cut them into lengths. I should get about three lengths in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them into spears and they're going to go right from the bottom to the first lip all my spears. That way that'll give me over a half an inch headroom to put my brine in. I might even go a little lower. Yeah, I might I might even go just a little bit lower. All right? So that's what I'm going to do next. Now my brine what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, probably uh, four cups of very warm water and about uh, three and a half cups of uh, table salt. I'm going to dissolve the table salt in the warm water. Then I'm going to add uh, 28 cups of very, very cold water. Then I'm going to mix it all up. I'm going to take all my spheres that I have, put them in a bowl with all my brine. But you can see right here, I have a bunch of plastic cups. Okay, so I'm going to take all these plastic cups fill them with my pickles, or fill them with my cucumber spears. Then I'm going to top them off with brine. Then I'm going to put something on top of the pickles in them pots so that it keeps the, uh, the cucumbers in the brine for 12 hours. Uh, you can go anywhere from 12 hours to 7 days, but not less than 12 hours. So I figure if I got eight batches to do, or seven batches to do, that I'm going to just go 12 hours. So every 12 hours, I'll be making a batch, and then putting another batch or two in the fridge. All right? So for now, I'll just take the end here, 
just cut off the slower part, and then I'm going to measure my jars. So by measuring the jars, I'm thinking right there. So let's just check that out. There you go. See what I mean? All right. Still gives me room, headroom, to put my liquid, and it still gives me breathing room at the top. All right, so I'm going to use that as my measurement, and that's what I'm going to do. So now, this here needs to be washed. So basically, I'm just going to make my spears now. These are all the size I'm going to have. That's perfect bite size. And that is going to be my dill pickles. All right. So I'm going to continue on. I have 16 pounds that I'm going to uh, cut and I'm going to prepare. So for now, I'm just going to cut all my cucumbers, fill up a massive bowl. Then I'm going to take all my jars and we're going to start cleaning our jars and I'm going to start making my brine and putting everything in the brine and in the fridge they go. So I'll be right back. All right, just finishing up. Over there, I got eight pounds. This is another eight pounds. So we're gonna start off with uh, 16 pounds. So right now I got the kettle on, boiling some water so that I can make the brine. And uh, yeah, it's gonna go pretty good. So I'll just finish this up. mixing the brine and getting them in the pails. And a good thing is uh, your seeds. <laughs> Whatever comes out in your seeds, just grab your plate. There you go. Next year's, uh, I don't know. Anyways, let's see. That's for next year. I'll just put that on top of the microwave. Oh, I already got some dry. See, right now, that's all I do is I got uh, other seeds here, and that's uh, my banana peppers. So whenever I harvest, I always keep all the seeds, then I mark it, and then I put it back into a paper envelope, and that's for next year and the year after. And don't forget, put the date on it. That way you know how old your uh, seeds are. So anyways, I'm going to start getting the brine together. These are all the tips that I'll be throwing in my composter. 
and that's the flower ends and all the other ends here I'm going to cut into chips and maybe get one jar out of that. So I'll be right back when I start uh, putting the brine together. And again, my knife of choice for in the kitchen is my Morocco's bowl. I'll be right back. And right here is all my dill. So <laughs> ah, I got a lot of dill in there. And whatever I use, I use. Whatever's left over, I'm probably going to uh, cut the flowers off, trim it all up, put it in the freezer to keep it fresh for my next batch, or I might just dehydrate that. I'm not sure, but that's another video. now that the water is boiled is I'm going to start making my brine but I gave the measurement at the uh, at the beginning of the video for everything but the big buckets don't fit in my fridge so I got to use these smaller buckets right here that I got and over there to uh, separate all my uh, cucumbers because it won't uh, big buckets won't fit in my uh, fridge but anyways just to let you know like I always mark my buckets, like for example, see this one here, it's got my name on it, it's got nine bowls, okay, and that's roughly two and a half cups, and there's 22 cups in here, okay, that's 22 cups. Again, this one here has my name on it, 16 cups, six bowls. All right, roughly two, two and a half cups per bowl. See, cups per bowl. Now, what I do with this is all, all, all my buckets are measured, pre-measured. These are the bowls that I'm talking about. These are good, healthy meals. Okay, if you're having chili, if you're having uh, soup, or if you're having uh, stew or whatever. Okay, because like I was saying in the video... When I was making my, uh, at the start of the video, when I was making my stew, that my stew pot, <laughs> like that's a, that's, that's a big pot. That's one of the biggest pots I got. And I make a massive, massive stew. And I no longer have to measure it. Okay. When I want to store it and I start filling up these buckets, I know if I fill it all up to the brim, all my buckets, I know exactly how many cups are in the bowl or in each bucket. And I know how many bowls are in here so that way when it's time to uh, to dehydrate then I just got to measure nine right see these are nine bowls well my dehydrator has nine racks so as long as I can take this one bucket and divide it into nine racks and dehydrate it so I know that each rack is one serving whether I'm using chili or stew or whatever so yeah, so whenever you're working with uh, your buckets and all that, keep it as a tool. Mark on the bottom what the, what the measurements are, and you'll never have to worry about it again. All you're doing is filling it up, and you know exactly what's in every one. So I know there's nine bowls here, okay? I know there's six bowls in this one, I, you know what I mean? So that's just a, a, little, a little tip. So for now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm not going to put any hot water in this whatsoever. I'm going to use this metal bowl. <clears throat> now, as far as measurements goes, like I said, it's at the beginning of the video. So all I did is took the measurements at the beginning of the video, and I'm going to divide it into five bowls. So there's some hot water. There's my salt. I'm going to use a wooden spoon. Okay, if you use a lot of metal spoons or whatever, who knows, might rust. I don't know. I use wood. So let's let's dissolve that up. So 
So the brine is going to take all the uh, excess uh, moisture out of the uh, cucumbers for your pickles. So then we're going to start cooling it down. So now, in this bowl, I have exactly seven cups of water, right? One cup of hot, six cups of uh, cold, and I also have uh, a quarter cup of my table salt. So that's a brine for a bucket. So I'll just mix it up. And then I'll fill this with pickles and then I'll fill it with the brine. Oh, another thing. After this is filled with your, uh, your cucumbers and all your brine, take um, whatever fits, whatever has a little bit of weight to it and put it inside on top of your pickles. And it, it, it keeps your, your pickles, I keep saying pickles, it keeps your cucumbers in the brine, okay? So that's what I'm going to use, all right? And that just keeps it in there and then it's going to be in the fridge. So I'm going to fill some up and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so right now, I have four buckets here, uh, full of uh, cucumbers, and I have brine in all four. But it's not quite topped off, so now I'm just going to top it off. You know what? I gotta mix another batch. All right, I'm gonna dissolve one more batch and then I'll fill up the buckets and I'll give you a look. So right now, this is what you got. So all the brine's in there. I could still push down all the uh, cucumbers into the solution. Yeah, so it's not overfilled as far as uh, the cucumbers go. They all sink with a little bit of weight. And right here is the, um, all the short pieces that were too, uh, too short to cut into spears. I just cut these into um, slices and every time I start doing all my other batches I'll just keep filling this up because like I said you could put this in the fridge uh, 12 hours and beyond 12 12 hours to seven days of soaking so I'm just going to do it every 12 hours and this I'll keep it like that right till the end and then whatever is there I'll uh, make my own jars so now that that's full you take your plate, put it on top, I'm just uh, sinking the plate so that I know everything underneath is submerged. 
and there's enough juice on top of the plates to create weight. All right, so basically that's what I'm going to do. All right, then I'm going to take this and put it in the fridge. So anyways, I'm going to finish up here. And uh, when I come back, it'll be uh, 12 hours from now. Or maybe a little longer. See you in a bit. All right. So it's been uh, over 12 hours that these have been in the fridge. So <laughs> as you can see, the, uh, the plates have sunk down pretty good. I'm just gonna put this on the cutting board because I'm still using this. Now the, uh, let me just dry it off, strip it off. Okay, so basically after sitting in the fridge, you can see that it's pliable, it can bend, okay, but they're not soggy like, you know what I mean? So now when I stuff the jars, it should stuff pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, take these out. And then uh, I got over here, I got some more chips here. All right, some more chips there to put in. And uh, I have my next batch for uh, in 12 hours from now. So as soon as As soon as I empty all the containers, what we're going to have to do is just give these a little bit of a rinse because, you know, they've been sitting in a salt brine, so we'll give this a bit of a rinse. And while we're rinsing that, I'll restuff these containers with all the ones for tomorrow. So anyways, that's what I got to do. I got four of these to empty. So, I'll be right back when that's done. Okay, we'll let this drip for a bit. All right, let's fill these buckets. Okay, so anyways, uh, I, don't, I don't think you can see it, but here, there's all my pickles I took out of the, uh, the brine that's in the fridge. Okay, now, okay, what we're going to make right now is the uh, pickling brine. So in this pot right here, all I have is 10 cups of water, okay? So in here, I'm going to put in three quarter cup of white sugar I also have three quarters cup of the uh, pickling salt all right so right now 
this is going to be uh, five cups of vinegar I'm going to put in here. So that's ten cups of water with five cups of vinegar. This is my pickling brine, so now it's going to go on the stove. We're going to bring that to a boil, and I'll bring you right back once that's uh, happening. All right, so the uh, the brine's heating up in the background, so now it's time to uh, get everything else ready that goes in the jar. So I have uh, garlic. This is only part of it, but what I'm going to do is uh, take all the skins off. There's a few ways to do that. You can use just a paring knife and peel it off, but that's time consuming. Or you can get these little rubberized uh, apparatuses here, where if you just take your garlic, put it in here, and you just rub it, okay, it takes off the, uh, the skins, all right? You put it on the ground, you can do it that way also. Just give it a roll, and out comes the garlic. All right, so it, it works very easy, you know, it works very easy. And then out it comes. So that's one way. Or what you could do is if you use two bowls, put it together, and just shake it <laughs> that's noisy let's see what it looks like well you know what just give it a pinch I prefer I definitely prefer this method right here okay but when you watch online and whatever they put it in here but they still have to peel it so there we go so what they're doing is just softening up the skins so that you can just easily pull out your garlic as you can see it does work but you still got skin that's stuck on it see and here's the one I did as comparison this one here there is no skin but see these two here still have a layer of skin now they make it seem very easy doing it the other way but I find using the, uh, the leather uh, sheet. See, there's a comparison. No skins, still has a small skin. So I prefer this rather than shaking it in a couple of bowls or shaking it in a jar. I find that this is better. All right, so I got a lot of garlic. I got to uh, de-skin, so I'll be right back. Okay, just the last couple to get me started. Okay, so anyway, one thing to note before someone says something in the comments, but it don't matter. The garlic here that I'm peeling with this rubberized uh, pad, all right? That's all fresh grown garlic that was picked in late June, early July of this year. So you have to use this. The skins on here is so tight, there's no way 
that if you shake it in a jar or a couple of bowls, that them skins are going to come off. There's just no way. It's too fresh. Now, the, the older the garlic gets, it, it shrinks inside the wrapper, right? So the older it gets, this here starts to shrink inside the skins. Therefore, if you put it in a couple of bowls or in a jar and shake it around, yeah, they may come fairly clean, fairly easy. So, when you have fresh garlic that's just picked and grown this year, use this. It'll save you a lot of headaches. Because there's no way, I showed you, putting it in the bowls and aggressive behavior, <laughs> it didn't do it. Okay? So anyways, that's just uh, something to uh, remember. So I'm going to use this here just to stuff a few jars. And this is what I use to peel my garlic. It's just a rubberized apparatus. So anyways, I just wanted to put that out there in case it's said in the comments that, oh, I have no problems. Well, probably not. But I can guarantee you, it's not fresh. This is. All right. Let's continue on with the uh, stuffing the jars with pickles. Okay, so the brine is uh, heated up, so now it's time to put all my spices together. Get my uh, jars uh, ready to stuff. But before I do that, I want to go over a few things. Alright, so mustard seed. Okay, I use mustard seed in my recipe. And each jar will get a half a teaspoon. All right, so that's a half a teaspoon in each jar. There it is. That's mustard seed. All right, right here, coriander. Okay, that's also a seed. And in this, I only put an eighth of a teaspoon per jar. Okay, coriander seed. So it's an eighth of a teaspoon. All right. So there's one. There's two. Now, I don't have any grape leaves or anything like that uh, to help the pickles maintain a, a, a crunchy, a, a, like. In order to have a nice, crisp, crunchy dill pickle, you have to use an alternative. Eh? You could put grape leaves or whatever and stuff like this. I don't have any of that. I couldn't get any of that. So what I did is I got uh, Pickle Fresh. Okay, it's granular. It's a salt base. And in here, I also only use an eighth of a teaspoon. Okay, and that's just going to help in the process to keep your uh, pickles nice and crispy. All right, so that's what goes in there. Now, as far as my garlic goes, I, I like garlic, you know, I, I really do. So I'm going to start off with, let's, I got lots of garlic, so I'll probably put Ah, you know what? I'll put one in for now. Ah, you know what? Let's let's put two. I like garlic. Let's put two. All right. So there's my garlic. Now I have fresh dill. I have a five-gallon bucket full of fresh dill, so I'm not going to be shy with my dill. That's for sure. But. If you don't have dill or are very limited with your dill, you can also use dill seed, okay? And like that's that's my own harvest of dill seed. So if I'm getting low on the dill weed, I can always just use dill seed. But for now, I have the weed. So in each, that's a complete flower. All right. Ooh, that's a nice size one. Look at that. That's a nice flower. <laughs> okay. 
So if that's got a nice flower, we gotta we gotta put something else in the other one to match it, right? So there you go. So again, in here, I got two flower roets of the dill weed. I got two garlic. All right. I have a half a teaspoon in each of uh, mustard seed. I also have an eighth of a teaspoon in each of uh, coriander seed and an eighth of a teaspoon of that uh, pickle fresh. All right, so now all I got to do is take my spears, my uh, cucumber spears, and stuff these full. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. I'll be right back. All right, so now it's time to, uh, to stuff the jars. So all my ingredients are in there. So let's stuff the jar. So when you're stuffing your jars, remember to uh, to put it as tight as you can. So there you go. Just keep stuffing your jar as much as you can. The more the merrier. Okay, so now my jar is stuffed pretty good. I'll probably get one more maybe in here. All right, so let's see if I can get one in there. There you go. So now that's a stuffed jar. Okay, there's another stuffed jar. Can I get one in there? There's a small one. No, well, that's pretty well lit, but that's okay. So now I have two stuffed jars. Okay? And you can see the reason why I had to trim some of them is because they're sitting on top of the chunks of garlic. <laughs> But anyways, there's two jars ready to pickle. Now it's time to put the brine in. So now I fill it up with the brine. I make sure it's over top of everything at least about a half an inch. Then once we do that, I'll put the lids on, lightly uh, put it uh, hand tight. And then once I got enough for the uh, canner, we'll cross that bridge when I get there. But anyways, in the process of doing this, I only have, there's two here, so hey, I'm almost done. I only got 53 more jars to pack. So let's uh, do that off screen. 53 more jars. Okay, so now it's time to take our brine, fill our jars. I just want to show you something. I'm just going to grab a jar and just, just to show you. You see the ridge here and the top of the jar. Okay, there's the top of the jar. There's the ridge. That's one inch. But what you want to do is you need head space. So you want to make sure that your brine is at least a half an inch or so over your uh, content. And you need a half an inch breathing space. But if you turn your jar, and there's your thread, right? See? So this is a half an inch, and that's a half an inch. All right? So there's, they take all the guesswork out. So when you're filling your jar with your brine, just fill up to this line here, and you already got a half an inch over your content and a half an inch breathing room. All right? Then when all your jars are full, now these are tightly packed. So when it's all full of your brine, just what I use is an orange peeler because it's really, really thin, very, very thin because you can't get a spoon in there. And I just poke around 
inside all the way down just to move the pickles around a little bit and take away the air bubbles. Then what I can do is come over here, just give it a couple of light taps, poke it around a little bit with this, and then put it over on the side on another towel because it's going to be hot. All right. Make sure you have your uh, your funnel for the wide mouth or whatever. All right. Oh, this is going to be hot. So just be careful. A little bit at a time. Just support it. And put your brine in. There you go. It's right at that thread, right there. So now I got a half an inch headspace and well over a half an inch above my uh, cucumbers for pickling. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the air out. So I'll just poke around. Oh, see, you can see the bubble. Well, you're a little far, but you'll see the bubbles. Okay. So just poke around. Oh yeah, there's a lot of bubbles. A lot of bubbles coming up. Lots and lots of bubbles. And then just give it a tap. And check it again. Just move around your pickles. I know it's time consuming, but you know what? You, you got to do that. You got to get your air out. So time consuming or not, it's, it's a step that's got to be done. Okay, so now I'm getting no more bubbles. Okay, there's no more bubbles. So I got to check my level again. Yeah, just a little bit, add a little bit. There you go. So that's ready now for your canner, right? So what you got to do is take a nice damp cloth and you just want to wipe the rim. Okay, make sure you get the top where it's going gonna, it's gonna to seal on the top, right? So just wipe her all nice. Make sure it's nice and clean. You have no pickling juice, seeds, or whatever on top. All right. So that's right. Now, behind me on the stove, over here, I have all the lids. Okay. Now, the lids itself, you put it in your water and you just heat it up real good. And what it does is it activates the seal, okay? It softens the seal. I'll show you in a minute. So anyways, this is a magnet. Okay, that's a magnet. Nice little tool. So now you can see the ring. Okay, now the red ring is what softens up and gives you your seal. And you'll notice everything else is white. Okay, that is also put there as a sealant for your jars and keeps everything fresh. Okay, and it stops your jar lid from rusting and the whole nine yards. So anyways, that's been sitting in very hot water to soften up your seal. So you just grab it out of here, lay it on top. Pull off your magnet, grab your ring, and that's it. Don't tighten it, just like, that's it. Just enough to hold the ring on. So once I got everything ready, 
and all the brine in all my jars. Then I'm going to go to uh, my uh, canner there, and I'm going to make sure that the water's going to come up to temperature, and then it's time to do the pickling. All right. So for now, I have uh, 19 jars that I got to fill with the brine, and I'll get right back to you. This here is just step one. Now, when you grab this, it's very, very hot. Make sure you put it on a towel. Okay, and just leave it there until you got enough for your uh, for your pot. Okay. okay. Now, this method is called the uh, low temperature pasteurization. Okay. This is the low temperature pasteurization method for the canning. Now, basically, what I'm going to do, or what I've done, is we preheated the water in this here canner to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, and we kept it there. Now, I also use my canning thermometer, okay? Put it in there to keep control of the temp. All right, so now that we had it up to there, I'm gonna put, put all my jars and everything in here, place it all into the canner, but I'm gonna make sure my liquid is at least two inches above the jars. For me, I might even have to put a little higher just so that I can put this in here, all right? That way this is in the water because I got to maintain a temperature. So once I got all my jars in and I, I make sure that the uh, the liquid is at least two inches above the, the jars inside here, I'm going to slowly, slowly just bring the temperature up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to try and maintain a temperature between 180 to 185. I'm going to try and maintain that <coughs> on an electric stove. Now, I'm going to try and keep that for 30 minutes. And that is when I'll take it out of its bath and put it aside and my process will be done. All right. All right. Also, just want to point out that I have a rack in the bottom of my pot. Okay. Now, you should always have a rack in the bottom of your canner. It stabilizes the jars. It keeps them from rattling and this one here also has side levers that you can lift it up onto your side here to take it out of the water but for now this is the, what we keep and that's just to keep your uh, jars from clanging together while it's uh, pickling so this is what I'm gonna do now it's time to uh, put the jars in so first thing you do is you grab your your tongs all right Reach over. And start filling up your canner. All right, so right now, you can see all the jars are in there. I got a good amount of water over the, uh, over the lids. And so I'm maintaining my temperature. So I turned up the stove now, because like I said, it was sitting at the 140 mark, and now it's just starting to raise. So what am I sitting at? Uh, 160. So again, I got to make sure I get between 180 and 185. All right. I'll get back to you in a few minutes once I reach that. All right, so right now my temperature is sitting at 180. Okay, because if you look at the markings, the markings are uh, increments of 5. So now that it's sitting at 180, I put the timer on for 30 minutes. I'll still monitor the, the uh, water temperature because I, I want it to fluctuate between 180 and 185 not lower not higher okay so right now it's exactly 180 all right okay so we're sitting right now 182.5 183 all right so anyways I held that at 182 183 oh there's my alarm 30 minutes is up time to take them out but anyways 
quick update. Uh, I held that perfectly between 180 and 185 for 30 minutes. All right, so these are the last eight. So all I got to do now is uh, fill up the brine, cap them, and uh, put it in for its hot bath. But that's what we've done so far, and this is the last batch. Okay, temperature is still uh, 182, 183. It's got to be between 180 and 185, and this is the last batch. And then after that, it's uh, let it all cool, let it sit for, like I said, 48 hours, and then uh, down in the pantry it goes. All right, I'll get back in a minute once everything's done. All right, dill pickles are now complete. So this is the batch we've done. You've seen what I started off with. Now each of these jars are 500 milliliters. It's going to all go in the pantry. We have 63 jars. So now we can't uh, disturb them whatsoever until they're cool and they've sat for at least 24 hours. Myself, I always give 48 hours undisturbed. So that's the process for making uh, dill pickles. Thank you very much for dropping by. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that bell for upcoming videos. So this is dill pickles. We've already done the bread and butter pickles. We're going to do stewed tomatoes next. And then we're going to have to uh, get together again to make some a relish. We're going to make some uh, yellow relish. All right, guys. Thanks for dropping by. Take care. Happy gardening and uh, get some canning done. Bye now.